Hello, my name is Erika, and in this video I will be showing you the 3.7 features together with Mario, who will be showing you the runtime parts. Let's start with the new audio features. When you update Spine to version 3.7, a new node will appear in the tree. Just like the Images node, the Audio node will automatically display a folder if it is called Audio. But you can also manually set the path to do it. The audio files within the folder will be displayed in the audio node. To add an audio file to the project, select it, then click the New Event button. This will create an audio event, similar to a normal event, but with the addition of the volume and balance settings. Let's create a second footstep audio event. Now let's switch to Animate mode. You can open the audio view from the view drop-down menu. To add audio to your animation, click the green key next to the audio event. This will make it appear both in the audio panel and in the dope sheet. The audio panel lets you select the volume and mute the audio. You can also choose your preferred audio device. Let's add a second footstep and listen to the result. You can move the position of the audio from the dope sheet where a line will help you visualize the length of the track. Scrapping through the animation will preview the audio. You can also resize the audio timeline independently to see the waveform in better detail. The export options have been revamped. JSON and binary format now offer automatic animation cleanup on export and you can choose to pack the project attachments or an image folder. Strip white space is now compatible with meshes. GIF export now offers a preview panel and you will have more control over which animations or skin you want to export. New settings like the number of repetitions and a small pause after each repetition will help you showcase your animations. And with the new crop setting, getting them just the right size will be a piece of cake. You can grab a handle in the preview or move around the frame to center the composition and then fine tune the position down to pixel precision. You can also tell Spine to fit a specific size and maybe pad the result so that it will output a perfect square. Range lets you export a portion of a longer animation. And there's even more settings to give you complete control over the result. Include last frame will make sure your loops don't have that extra pesky frame that matches at the beginning and at the end. The PNG export offers many of the GIF settings to export still images or sequences. And the new APNG export will give you all the PNG goodness in an animated version, displaying animations in all the modern browsers and a still image for the browsers that don't support it. The PSD export will create one frame per layer in a PSD file. JPEG includes many of the new settings as well, just like AVI and Move, where controlling the number of repeats and cropping can be the most useful. Video export also allows you to include audio now. You can now search in the tree through a text box that allows you to search for items in the hierarchy. Pressing Enter focuses the text box. For example, let's search for the term I key inside the hierarchy. Press Enter or F3 to select the next search result. To go to the previous result, just press Shift Enter or Shift plus F3. To select all of the items that match with the text, press Ctrl plus Enter. If you click on the filter icon and check text search filters, only elements that match the search text will show up in the tree view. And if you need to make a more advanced search, just type a slash at the beginning and at the end of your search. This will enable regular expressions. For example, an asterisk will match any number of characters. A question mark will match any single character. You can use a backslash to escape any of these characters. Once you're done searching, press ESC to empty the text box and exit the search. I will now create an IKEA constraint on the head of the sunflower. A regular IKEA constraint can't reach its target when it's too far away, and it will go past it when the target is too close on IKEAs that only have one bone. IKEA constraints in Spine now offer three new options, 
compress, stretch, and uniform. Compress only works for warm bone eye keys. When compress is selected, the bone will stretch vertically when the target goes past it. It will, however, stay the same when the bone is far away. Compress and uniform can be combined. This will cause the sunflower head to just shrink when the bone goes past it and stay the same when the target is farther away. Stretch does the opposite of compress. It allows the bone to always reach the target when it's far away, but it will stay the same when the target goes past the bone length. All of the three options can be combined together on a one bone eye key. On two bone eye key constraints, only the stretch option is available, allowing, for example, to stretch spine boy's leg but bending it when the target goes past the bone's length, resulting in some nice effects. And now let's come to my favorite topic, skins. In the past, if you wanted to animate a character with multiple accessories, you would first divide them in main complete skins and later transfer each piece in its own skin, because seeing them at the same time in the editor was otherwise impossible. Spine now offers a brand new skin panel. You can choose a skin from the upper panel and pin it to stay visible. This will make it appear in the lower panel that shows all the current pinned items. You can also reorder the skin pieces in the panel, making the ones more on top override the selected skins in a lower position of the list. Unpin a skin to remove it from the current preview. An element inside a skin placeholder is only editable when the skin is selected. This is great to avoid accidentally editing elements that don't belong to that skin. This panel is available both in setup and animate mode, allowing you to test different combinations on the fly. Skin duplication just became easier. For example, here we have some meshes that have some deformation keyframes. Especially during this walking animation, you can see how the foot deforms. And if we go to the skins node and select the goblin skin, we can duplicate it and call the new skin Goblin Girl. We can also choose to rename the attachments, then press OK, and this will replace every attachment that we have from the Goblin Images subfolder to the Goblin Girl Images subfolder. Only the face doesn't match, so I've unlinked the linked mesh that was created and reverted the mesh into a regular image attachment. If we check the animation, we will see that every other mesh has inherited the same deformations that the original skin has such as the belly moving up and down. I've actually hidden a hat in here. Let me reactivate it by right-clicking the parent bone. As you can see, the hat has its own animations. Let's say I have three color versions of the hat. I will create a skin for each of the hat colors with the name of the folder where they are in. Each of these new skin is empty. I will then reselect the hat, which is in no skin yet, and create a new skin placeholder. Spine 3.7 now allows you to choose to duplicate the contents of the newly created skin placeholder inside all the other skins. And it also allows you to change the path based on the name of the skin by choosing rename attachments. So as you can see, each skin will either display a hat if it has one or a missing image if there is none, like in this case. If you deselect the renaming, then the same attachment will be duplicated in each skin. Let's say I want to copy the vertices position from this shape to this other shape. Spine 3.7 now allows you to do so, just like you would do with bone position. You can copy the vertices position while in local or world axis. Just select all the vertices from the first shape that you want to copy and press Ctrl C. I have parented each shape to its own bone, so if I am in local axis, pasting the vertices position will be relative to the parent bone. It's also important to select the vertices in the exact same order. This will work for anything that has vertices, such as paths, clipping masks, bounding boxes. Spine now offers better support for pixel art. If we go to the spine settings in the graphics section and uncheck viewport linear filtering, the nearest neighbor filter will be used instead. If we also activate viewport linear grid, 
Spine will simulate how the graphics will appear in the engine, which is great to preview how your pixel art animations are going to look like. Hi, I'm Mario. I'm going to walk you through our Spine runtime's changes and improvements. For a full overview of runtime changes, check out our Spine runtime's change log, as well as the commit log for the 3.7 branch. Since the Spine 3.6 release, we have closed over 200 runtime issues. That includes bug fixes and enhancements. This wouldn't have been possible without your help, so thanks to everyone reporting issues and proposing enhancements. One of the new features in our runtimes is additive animation blending. By default, when playing animations on separate tracks, the pose from lower tracks is overridden by higher tracks. With an additive track, its pose is added to the result of the lower tracks, which allows you to blend animations like different facial expressions on top of each other. Let's look at this in action. For the owl, I've created four different animations, down, left, right, and up. Each animation stores a single pose, one for each of the four directions the owl can look in. I've slightly exaggerated the animation so the effect becomes more obvious. Looking at each animation's keys, we can see that the poses are defined mostly independently from each other. Additive blending lets us blend between these four poses seamlessly. In fact, with additive blending, we can blend any number of independent poses. This would be impossible or very hard to achieve with a more traditional control bone setup. We can use the preview to observe the effect of additively blending different animations. On track 0, I queue up the idle animation. It serves as the basis on top of which the other animations will be additively blended. I then turn on additive blending for track 1 and queue the left animation. I do the same for track 2, where I set up the up animation. I can control the contribution of each animation to the final pose through the track's alpha value. At the moment, all tracks contribute to the final pose equally. By decreasing the contribution of a track, I also change the final pose. Alpha values can go outside the 0 to 100 range which can yield some quite interesting effects. This owl definitely looks interesting now. Let's take the owl and build a little spine runtimes demo with it using additive blending. This demo is built using the spine SFML runtimes. It lets the owl follow the mouse cursor using additive blending. At the start of the application, I create a skeleton drawable, which is part of the spine SFML API. I make sure that it's positioned and sized correctly so it fits nicely into the window. I then queue up the idle animation on track 0, just like we did in the editor. Next, I queue up the left, right, up and down animations on tracks 1 to 4. I take the track entry for each of the queued animations and turn on additive blending by setting the mix blend to mix blend add. I also set the initial alpha values for each track entry to 0 so the animations do not contribute to the initial pose. All of these lines together mirror our setup in the Spine Editor preview from earlier. To make the owl follow the mouse, we modify the alpha values of track entries based on the mouse position. If the mouse cursor is on the left side of the screen, we want the left track entry to fully contribute to the final pose, meaning its alpha value will be 1. Conversely, the right entry's alpha value will be set to 0. We do the same for the y-axis using the up and down track entries. For in-between mouse positions, these tiny formulas will interpolate the alpha values of each track entry, yielding our final mouse following effect. In other news, we have created a new spine runtime for C++ called Spine CPP. We have refactored our engine integrations on the 3.7 and 3.8 beta branches for Coco Studio X, SFML, and Unreal Engine to be based on the Spine CPP runtime instead of the old Spine C runtime. For those of you who still require the engine integrations to be based on Spine C, we have created the 3.7-C branch. Going forward, we will not maintain the Spine C-based engine integrations, but will focus our efforts entirely on the Spine CPP-based integrations. We have also created extensive documentation for Spine CPP, 
showing you basic API usage, as well as how to integrate Spine CPP with your custom rendering engine. For my final trick, I'd like to show you our replacement for the old Spine widget. This is called the Spine Player. It's a JavaScript CSS combination that allows you to integrate Spine animations super easily into your websites. The Spine Player sort of functions like a video player component. It has a bar at the bottom that lets you pause and resume your animations. It lets you scrub the timeline of an animation. It lets you specify the speed at which the animation should be played back at. Of course, you can also choose which animation in your skeleton to show. There's a bunch of debug settings that you can enable to inspect your skeleton, like showing the meshes, bounce, or clipping. And you can also make it full screen. Additionally, if your skeleton has skins, there will be another button here that shows you the skins to select from. Integrating the spine player into a website is actually quite simple. All you need is to include the spine player JS and spine player CSS files. You can get these either from our GitHub repository or directly reference the ones on our web server. Then you define an HTML element, maybe give it an idea so it's easily locatable. And within a script tag, you call new spine.spineplayer, providing it the ID of the element in which the spine player should be injected into, as well as a configuration object where you specify the relative URLs of your skeleton JSON file and your skeleton atlas file. For the atlas, it will also have PNG files, which will be automatically resolved based on the path you gave it for the atlas. The spine web player is highly customizable. You can do so by extending this configuration object with a bunch of other settings. For example, we can set a different background color and also define a new starting animation. Let's save this and reload the page. There we go. If you don't like the controls at the bottom, you can also disable them. And now we have zero control. Uh, all of these settings are documented in our Spine Web Player documentation. As you can see, we've been pretty thorough concerning all the features that are available to you. We've also integrated a little playground where you can edit this code and see the live changes up here. I hope to see this player on your website pretty soon and let us know what you're doing with it. Thanks for watching and happy animating.